In 2018, pilot Doug Norton and his wife went for their morning walk here in the Table Mountain National Park. A man approached them from behind. When he approached us, at the moment he pulled out the knife, you could see he was full of anger and it was something which sh sh was shaking his whole body. Then he looked um, a little bit scary. He looked like he's almost like a killing machine. Doug Norton was stabbed to death as his wife escaped. The incident was the first fatal attack during a series of brutal muggings plaguing the area at the time. In this visual investigation, we map out the attacks and show how a ranger helped catch who they believe is the Table Mountain Killer. So let's go back to January 2018. A teenage brother and sister were walking here near a popular hiking destination called Piers Cave. A man approached them and pulled out a knife. He robbed the teenagers of their cell phones and wallets, but they escaped unharmed. The very next day, a group of nine hikers were out on their weekly walk here when they were attacked and stabbed multiple times. Yeah, that's where the knife went in, yeah. Slit my head open, dashed my fingers open. Hit my teeth out with a rock. But it missed the main artery, and I by that much, and if that would have happened, I would have been a goner. Two weeks later, pilot Doug Norton and his wife were walking in this area, a short distance from the previous attacks. This is where Doug Norton would lose his life and his wife would escape unharmed. Ten days later, a neighborhood watch member was patrolling this area. He was suddenly attacked by a man armed with a screwdriver. He was stabbed multiple times and robbed of his cell phone watch and patrol radio. One month after the attack on the neighborhood watch member, an elderly cyclist named Ian McPherson went for a ride on his new mountain bike here. He was attacked by a man armed with a knife and stabbed to death. A jogger in the same area at the time later found McPherson bleeding out and called the police who reacted quickly. A Sandpox master tracker arrived on scene shortly after the attack and followed the stolen mountain bike's tire tracks in the sand over these dunes as the culprit attempted to make his escape. The whole scaffolding was there, I could see the bike, that's what happened here. And then from here, he pushed the bike until after those trees there. Then from there, he get on a bike and he cycled down. The tracks led past a residential complex in the area where an infrared camera caught the attacker pushing the stolen bicycle. Police believe that this image shows that the culprit was wearing a v-neck shirt during the attack. The sandpox tracker followed the bicycle to a busy road called Okopsevach. It is believed the attacker cycled the bike from here down to Masipumelele, a nearby informal settlement. Police traced McPherson's stolen phone to this same area and they swooped in, recovering the phone and bicycle from local vendors in the settlement. When police asked who the vendors bought the items from, they gave the name of a Zimbabwean national called Blessing. Two days after the attacks, police tracked Blessing to his home in Philippi East. Here, police found a patrol radio which belonged to the neighborhood watch member who was robbed weeks earlier. They also found a blue v-neck shirt, stained with what appeared to be blood. DNA tests would later confirm that this blood belonged to the murdered cyclist Ian McPherson. Coincidentally, the Sam Park's master tracker who tracked the bicycle over the dunes had photographed Blessing Beveni wearing the same blue shirt a few weeks before Ian McPherson's murder. He was wearing well. If he's on a mountain, he will dress, probably like me, in a way of saying that I'm also a, a hiker. Two years later and Blessing Beveni's trial began in the Western Cape High Court. He is facing possible life imprisonment for 10 counts of assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm, robbery with aggravating circumstances, and the murder of pilot Doug Norton and cyclist Ian McPherson. Beveni is also alleged to have used a false passport to gain temporary asylum in South Africa since 2017. His history in Zimbabwe is largely unknown at this time. He has been unpredictable in court. 
During a tea break in the trial, Blessing spat and swore at a photographer. Veni has pleaded not guilty and denies all the allegations against him. As part of his defense, Blessing is expected to testify, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the trial was postponed to October 5th, 2020. He will remain in Polsmore Prison until the case resumes. Thank you.